<laughs> this isn't live. Go that far down. Can, we can pause. <laughs> I thought I was just going to be able to bend down. She looked like kept going. Pennywise in the <laughs> <Okay>. drain. <laughs> Hey y'all, welcome to Stowers Homestead. I'm Zach. And I'm Jen. And Jen's already getting into this bad boy right now. <laughs> so today we are making elderberry syrup. We are. Uh, we got a couple other things that we're going to talk about, but that is pretty much the main focus here. Uh, I know a lot of people make it, um, but there's a lot of people that are also interested. We've had a lot of questions about it, um, if we use it, if we take it, and if we make it. So Jen is going to show that because the answer to all of that is yes. Yeah. I uh, usually don't make it, but this year I was like, you know what, I'm making my own. Yeah. So, we'll so we wanted to share it with you all. Cut out that. the middleman and do our own thing. That's exactly right because <laughs> elderberry syrup isn't cheap. Yeah. Um, I mean, it is kind of expensive. And no, we do not grow our own elderberries here just yet. Um, so we did purchase our elderberries, um, which we'll have a link below. Yep. You know, yep. I'll go ahead and show you. It's Star West Botanicals. Um, it's off Amazon. It's a pretty tried and true, trusted brand by a lot of people that you'll see that make elderberry syrup. This is a good one. It's all organic and it's one pound, which is three cups. So. And, that, and that makes a lot, a um, lot, what you're about to see here. And this is what it looks like. Yep. <laughs> so let's get right into this thing because Jen's yep. already got the water rolling. <laughs> So like I said, I got my elderberries off Amazon. If you have fresh elderberries, even better. But if you don't, you can get them off Amazon. Um, they're all organic, they're good, they're already dried. So we don't have to worry about doing any of that process. They are ready to go. Also, if you don't wanna make elderberry syrup and you just wanna make elderberry tea, you can get the same elderberries and do that. And it's a whole lot simpler. We just like the syrup because the kids like it. It's easier to have on hand. And we'll probably get some more for tea too. But today I'm doing the whole package. So it's one pound, which I told you is three cups. So I have two pots going. I could have just put it into one. But I didn't really want to do that. I want to do two separate ones. Um, so there's... Because we're doing this on a large scale. So for yeah. people that might just want to be doing it for the house, you might do it half, which we're going to show you what one pot does. So yeah. down in the recipe below, we'll give you the one pot recipe. Yep. Yeah. So there is seven cups of water in each pan. So if you put it all together, it would be 14 cups, but I'm doing two separate. So seven cups of water. My pans are not on. My water's not heating up. I'm gonna put everything in and then we're gonna bring it to a boil. So I'm just gonna half this. It's three cups of elderberries. So you're gonna do one and a half in each. One and a half cups. It's so dark. <laughs> Squint them eyes in there. Actually, that's perfect. Perfect. Look at you. <laughs> See, you've gotten so good at dashing. So good. That you just got this now. So the next thing you need is ginger, and you're going to want it grated. But we actually have fresh ginger, so we're going to grate it ourselves. Um, if you have ground ginger, I'm sure that would probably work too. There you are. <laughs> <laughs> that's not creepy at all. I wanted to say store-bought ginger. Pause. Pause. <laughs> pause. What? <laughs> This isn't I live. Had to go that far down. I can, we can pause. <laughs> I thought I was just gonna be able to bend down. She looked like she kept going. Pennywise in the okay. drain. Wanna <laughs> <laughs> come play? Okay. Anyways, about the ginger. Anyways, you can use fresh ginger. Obviously, you can grow your own ginger, but if you just want to use ground store-bought ginger, that's fine too. Yeah. Sign up. Yeah. So. This was not grown at home. This was no, grown. it wasn't. But we bought it fresh uh, from the from the store, so it's just we got to grade it ourselves. Yep. You get over there. I'm good. Okay. <laughs> Back to grading this ginger. Hilarious. So for each pot, that was four tablespoons of ginger. 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 If you're doing it all together, eight tablespoons. But if you're separating it, four tablespoons each. Yep. And it smells like a big old. Uh, sushi place in here. <laughs> you know, like when they put the ginger on the yeah. side? That's yeah. what it smells like up in here. So what's next? Cinnamon. Cinnamon. Yeah. Okay, now for each pot, you're going to put two teaspoons of ginger. Nope. If you... Nope. <laughs> <laughs> two teaspoons of cinnamon. Wow. <laughs> we promise the ingredient list will be below. <laughs> For your it wasn't tanking. supposed to be a how-to. It was <laughs> and just supposed to be an overview. This thing has like five ingredients and it's super <laughs> simple, but I feel like we're making it so complicated. Yeah. So we apologize. What we're gonna do, no yeah, once we get everything in there, we'll talk through exactly what one pot, one pot is and then have it down below. 
and then you all can double or half or whatever you want on your own time. <laughs> <laughs> all right, last, what you're going to put in this pot is one two teaspoon each of ground cloves. Hell up, cloves. And so this is not the last ingredient, but it's the last ingredient for this step. Yep. One teaspoon each or two teaspoons all together. Okay, this one pot right here, it's just a normal little spaghetti pot of what I call it. In this cup or in this pot is a one and a half cups of elderberries, seven cups of water, four tablespoons of ginger. It can be, uh, I, we did minced, I guess you could say, um, but you can use just powder if that's what you got. Two teaspoons of cinnamon, two teaspoons of ground cloves, and then the last ingredient's cumin. So hopefully that cleared a little bit of the mud that Pennywise was talking about earlier. <laughs> what we're gonna do now is we're gonna bring it to a boil, and then once it starts to boil, we're gonna let it simmer for 45 minutes to an hour. And you cover it, right, once it boils. Once it once boils, you, you cover it, yes. Right. I'm gonna get my spoon and stir it all together. Maybe. Packed. Smells really good. It does. Kinda smells like Christmas. Christmas. <laughs> little, little hit of Christmas <laughs> when building your immune system. Yep. So also, if you're watching this, after we've done confuse you on how to make elderberry syrup, you might be like, what in the heck even is elderberry syrup? <laughs> uh, yeah, good point. <laughs> right? Good point. <laughs> so elderberry syrup, like hot cider, is good for your immune system, right? Yes, very good for your immune system. Yeah, so you actually kind of... It's fire cider, not hot cider. I always call it hot cider. Here I go again. Wow. There is... They're gonna leave this video and be like, I'm not sure what I watched. I'm not what, sure what just went I down feel there. like I'm supposed to have learned something, but I'm not exactly sure what it was. Hey. So like fire cider, um, we take, well, mainly me, this one's gonna be taking the elderberry. Um, we, <laughs> no, that fire cider, I, uh -uh. Um, no. I take two to three <laughs> tablespoons a day no. um, to be preventative so, uh, for cold and flu. So I take that just to kind of help myself out. This elderberry syrup does the exact same thing. One thing you'll find common in both is they're both very beneficial to your immune system. Yeah, and they so, have all the ingredients are good for you. Um, ginger, all your herbs, all your stuff like that. Um, your garlic, your elderberries, your honey, mm -hmm. all that stuff has so many good things for you. And when you combine them all together and make stuff like this, it's sure fire way to beat any kind of nastiness you get throughout the winter time. Yeah, so you can take it as preventative. Uh, I actually kind of overdo it, I guess, a little by taking three tablespoons daily. Uh, but you can take one or two. But, it, uh, I mean, it can't hurt you. Yes, no, it can't hurt you. Um, however, it also heals you quicker if you actually do catch the cold or flu. Um, so you would just ump that up to maybe three tablespoons every three to four hours, just like you would normally take medicine. Um, because that's what this is. It's yeah. a natural healing product, and it's super simple. So. Yeah. For those of you that are like, after I just got done listening to that very confusing ingredient list, now you at least know what we're talking yeah. about. And he loves the fire cider. I do. Me and the kids do not. So this is going to be perfect for me and the kids. We don't have to drink that crazy stuff. That I'll tell you enjoy. what though, when I take that fire cider, it just, <laughs> I am I mean, open. It, now, I'm... if I was really sick, I would force myself to do it. However, I can't prevent it, preventatively do it like he does. I just can't do it. It's, I'll tell you one thing, it's better than taking some NyQuil. That's true, that's mm -hmm. true. It's better than cough syrup. That's right. <laughs> and no telling what that actually is done to your body on top of trying to trying to make you better, which it doesn't. Yeah. Just put you to sleep. Yeah. Anyways, that's for another day. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're gonna bring us to a boil and let it simmer for 45 minutes. Yep. Okay, while we wait for the 45 minutes, we have two things that we can do, right? We can just cut right into it when it's done, <laughs> or you all can enjoy a little bit of this time with us as well. It won't take 45 minutes. It will not, we <laughs> promise. Um, but, we wanted to do a little get to know you thing. We haven't done this probably since about last winter. Yeah. Because uh, well. that's when it, things get a little bit slower and you have time to think about it. Well, Nathan over at Samson Farms and then also Overlook Valley Homestead tagged us in it. And I apologize if there's some others that tagged us and we didn't catch. Uh, but they came up with 10 questions yep. they wanted homesteaders to answer. And so we looked them over and we thought it would be something that you all, the viewer, would actually probably enjoy learning about it. Yeah, because uh, kind of the answers to the questions we talk about a lot on our lives, but not in videos. So for right. those that don't catch lives, um, maybe it'll open up a few answers for y'all. But um, it was a great collab idea mm -hmm. um, thought of by Nathan, and we'll put both their links in the description. But we'll get right into it and not be long-winded. Let's do it. Fingers crossed. <laughs> 
There's some good questions in here that I could really roll deep this. on. You got this. <laughs> Number one, what got you into homesteading? Take it away. That'd be me. <laughs> I'll take the uh, credit for that one, I mm -hmm. think. Um, I've always, I was kind of a homesteader as a kid. My family was, and we kind of lived that lifestyle, got away from it a little bit when we moved to Kentucky, um, but we still loved the country life. We loved going to the country and doing that kind of stuff. Um, and then as I got older and got done with college, I started realizing the direction I wanted my life to go in, and that was homesteading. Uh, I didn't, I don't want to be a farmer. I never did want to be a farmer on a big scale, but I wanted to be a homesteader. I wanted to be a stay-at-home mom. I wanted to homeschool, and I wanted to raise animals and um, grow my own food. And thankfully, the YouTube community helped me get into that. Um, I watched for a really long time about how to do that and the steps that I needed to take, and then I convinced him, and here we are. Long-winded. <laughs> No, just kidding. I mean, she pretty much nailed it all. I grew up a country boy. Yeah. Uh, my great grandfather, he was a tobacco cattle farmer, um, big scale, huge scale. Um, the land that we're on is his, um, and so it just kind of all fell into place. So, with and her, and then my stepdad that passed away, um, it, it's kind of funny. He kind of is a homesteader because he was cheap, yeah. um, but really he had the philosophy of homesteading. Yeah, um, he's the one that talked us into this pole barn. Um, and really sold us on it and we love it and you know we I think a lot to him and to Jen and my great grandfather to be living this way yeah. and I just love it. We I just we wanted it. freedom basically. We yep. didn't want to be a part of the regular world. We wanted to live our own lives and have freedom to do whatever we want to. And it's so funny we always feel like we're different than others like yeah. and everything you know like I, what we think is different than what everybody else thinks but now that's turning. It yeah. feels like now we're the norm with all of you all <laughs> like that like and want to homestead as well. Yeah. You want to say hi real quick? Hi. Hi. All right. Question number two. What is something we want to add to our homestead in 2020? So there is a, a bunch of things. Um, but I think the biggest one that would be the most impactful will be pigs. Yeah. Uh, so we really want to get pigs. Um, if you follow breeder our pigs. channels. Yeah, breeder pigs. If you follow our channel, you know that uh, we've been talking about it quite a bit. Um, we're doing stuff now to get ready for them. So the goats are clearing out areas. So it makes it a lot more easier for me to do some fencing. Um, and we're going to do it around a pond. I do have a question and uh, hopefully one of you all can answer. We had a follower that uh, commented when I was talking about putting the pigs around our pond uh, to help seal it and because uh, it has a small leak. And they had mentioned they had heard by an old timer that it might not be best to put pigs in a pond. So from you all, uh, any of you all that are experienced pig owners, um, we've had pigs in the past, we didn't put them in a pond. Um, let us know, let us know um, pros and cons of that. Um, it's not a deep pond. Um, no. They're not gonna get stuck to where they would have an issue getting out. It's very shallow, <laughs> um, but. Our hope was that they would fix the leak. They yes. stomp it down, get all the unnecessary trees and stuff that are in there out, and yep. then seal it for us. Yeah, and give and them. And then have it as their, you know. Water whatever, source. Whatever yeah. yeah, water source, where they can roll around, stay cool, and all that yeah. stuff in the summer. So if you're an experienced pig farmer, let us know. <laughs> Question number three, what is the most difficult lesson you learned while homesteading? I think the most difficult thing is realizing that there's not enough hours in the day. Um, we are both overachievers. When we want something done, we want it done then. Um, we make our list and we have our projects and we want everything to be complete as soon mm -hmm. as it can be complete. So some days that's really difficult. You know, the hours get away from you and then you realize that you're halfway through a project and you're losing daylight and there's nothing you can do about that except for tell yourself to slow down and wait for the next day. But sometimes we get a little anxious about that. <laughs> yeah, and to add to that, it's really if like that first project takes you longer than you need it to. Yeah. Like if there's a yes. hiccup or something that comes so up. So frustrating. And, right, and actually a lot of that I deal with when we're like editing videos, like if I mm -hmm. have like a, just it's not flowing like it normally does and it like sets me back a little bit further, then it's, that kind of like sets the whole day because we yeah. pack it so full. So yeah. uh, that's definitely a lesson learned. Just chill, relax, don't do too much in mm -hmm. one day. Uh, make sure you have realistic goals. So that's right. we're there now, but uh, that was definitely something we had to yeah. learn the hard way at the beginning. You you say say hi? Hi. <laughs> okay, because we knew that we would break the rule and not be, or we would be long winded. We're going to try to power through a yep. couple real quick. So, mm -hmm. what is the favorite chore on the homestead? Anything to do with the garden, 100%. I am a gardener. Yep. She has can, turned me into it. I absolutely <laughs> love it. Um, I don't mind if it's 100 degrees out there and I'm pulling weeds. Yeah. I love getting in the dirt and doing all that good stuff. So that's my favorite chore. That's right. And the next one is what is your what? What is your favorite thing to grow? <laughs> um, my favorite thing to grow is my tea garden. All my herbs, um, all that kind of stuff. I love it. They're so beneficial. 
you know, it's not just good for you, but it's also fun to grow. They're easy to grow and it's my favorite. Yep, and I would say for me, uh, I think because it's more of a test and difficult would be peppers. I yeah. love growing peppers uh, just because it's not the one thing that it seems that we can just grow easily. Yeah. Uh, so I love a challenge. What do you love most about the homestead community? Everything. Uh, I think that's pretty simple. Just the fact that it's a community because right. it is and we're a part of something huge and a part of this gigantic family that we love so dearly. Absolutely. It, it, we are a family yeah. and uh, family makes everybody better and so it's always great. Uh, when we did our um, event, I said it in my speech, you know, it's so great that I know I can pick up the phone, I can look at comments, I, I can actually go on these videos, and without hesitation, you all will be there to help. Um, it's, we all know that we all need help in certain areas, and so we can all ask each other questions, openly to build a better growth for everyone to have a more sustainable life. What is our favorite meal that we make? Chicken pot pie. <laughs> <laughs> I love her chicken pot pie. It's so good. It's right up there. I mean, her and her chili. Oh, take all of that back. Zucchini bread. Yeah, I go. love her right. zucchini bread. Yeah. It is by far my favorite thing that she makes, but uh, for like a dinner, chicken pot pie yeah. for sure. Um, she has made videos on both of those if you're interested. Yeah. It's in her cooking recipe playlist, uh, but they're fantastic. Thank you. <laughs> um, what is our favorite holiday? Christmas. Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> we love um, And we're not going to get into a rant about it, but we it wouldn't be a really, rant anyways. really, well, it's kind of a soapbox. <laughs> we really, really enjoy the holiday season, like to the max that we possibly can. And I think it's, I mean, I don't know, it's just special to us. And um, we do fall into the commercialized aspect of it, but I don't think that's a negative thing. But um, we know the, I mean, we, the reason is always in this house. The yes. kids know, you can ask them right now, what's the true meaning of Christmas? And they're gonna say the birth of Jesus Christ. Yes. They're not gonna say presents or Santa Claus. Right. They always know it. And so, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt yeah. you, go ahead. But we do love seeing their faces light up on Christmas morning. Mm -hmm. um, we do everything that we can to give them a good Christmas. And we know that that doesn't have to be presents. Um, right. If it were the other way around, then they would be happy with anything or nothing at all. But we do enjoy yeah. <laughs> that aspect of it. And I don't think that's a negative thing. Mm -mm. Um, it's kind of been tossed around here lately, uh, but we do know the true meaning of Christmas. Um, you, yes, and you can support and enjoy Christmas and know the true reason and always live by that true reason. But to me, the commercial part, it, 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 it's a mix, right? Yeah. So we don't go into buying on, you know, maxing out credit cards and doing all this crazy stuff. That's the part that has a lot of the negative outlook. When I think about the commercial part, I think about family getting together. I think about our kids' eyes lighting up mm -hmm. um, and excitement because they don't get gifts throughout the whole year. It, we don't buy them whatever they want, whatever birthdays they want. And Christmas. Right, birthdays and Christmas. That's when they know they're going to get a little and something. And we work hard to make sure that we have something for them. Yes, we do. So I think of love, I think of family, I think of memories. Um, those are the things that I think when I think of the commercial side of Christmas and why we support it and uh, celebrate it. You know, that's. We love it. We're always going to love it. Yeah. Uh, the true meaning is always going to be here. They'll always understand it, but we also love seeing our kids' face light up yes. Christmas morning. We do. Because it lights us up. All right. We're also so glad. Sorry. <laughs> Powering off these last two super fast. Yeah. Is your homestead where you intend to settle permanently or are you looking to start over elsewhere? Nope. Next. <laughs> Wait, which one? What? Is it permanent or are we looking to start over somewhere? This is not permanent, no. This is not permanent. Yeah. We will eventually be somewhere else. Yep. Moving on. Moving on. <laughs> what do, oh, what, what home studies do you follow, follow and, enjoy? and enjoy learning from? So we watch a lot of people. I mean, there's so many. We watch, we, we're subscribed to probably 500 channels. Mm -hmm. um, so we just go through the subscription list and see one that, you know, is parking our interest or something we're doing now that we want to learn from. Um, but I would say some of that we grab regularly is uh, Jess and my Roots and Refuge Farm. Uh, Luke and in my gardener just because he's a wealth of freaking knowledge. Yeah, um, I've learned so much just uh, gardening from him um, We also love Haas Tools and Baker's Creek, you know, uh, we use a lot of their products. Uh, they also have a very good uh, YouTube channels, um, but then just everyone, you know, we uh, Like I said, it just depends on what's on the subscription list. Um, we look more for the titles and uh, What's actually the content yeah. rather than making sure that we're following friends um, Because we do follow them, but we have limited time. So yeah. We hit that subscription feed, find some stuff that's going on, usually something like we would normally do with YouTube. You search a problem, there it is. 
Um, but thankfully, a lot of you all are going through the same stuff, so it's easy to find a video that's uh, relative to what we need. That's right. Um, and as far as the collaboration goes, I'm pretty sure we're like the last channel to do it. Are so we? uh, we're just going to leave it open. You yeah. know, if you feel inclined and you want to do it, go for it. But that's how we do probably all. already have. That's how we do all collaborations. Um, <laughs> if we do one of these kind of things, we're not going to specifically tag right. most anyone. But if you watch our video and you're like, that was really cool, I want to do that too. Say that we tagged you, that works for us, yep. and do the video. Yep. So that's cool. You know, we don't think anything of copying or anything like that. No. So it's always an open invitation. That's right. All right, we still got some stuff to do on this elderberry syrup. So yep. let's do it. I hope you all hung out with us the whole time. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> yep. 45 minutes is up. My alarm's going, My alarm's going off. All right, so what are you doing, babe? Okay, so the time is up. We turned it off, and we're going to remove it from the heat and let it cool. I'm gonna let it get just warm and then we'll go from there. The reason we're doing this is because you're gonna put honey in it. If you put that honey in when it's too hot, you will ruin the honey and lose all the purposes that you're putting that in there for. So, um, yeah, we'll let it cool and then go from there. Okay, they are off the heat and setting to cool. So like she said, not cold, not room temperature, just all the way until once it gets lukewarm, right? Yeah. And then we'll add the honey, so we'll see you here in just a second. When I it, All right, while well, that's cooling, what are we doing? Um, eating. Cookies. <laughs> Making cookies. Making cookies. All right, get them all in the pan there. It's midday, but why not? Why not? We finished school. Yeah, get them on there. Well, yeah, no, put it on the, <laughs> put it on the pan. You know how we do this thing. Get to eat some. Yeah, give them the last two. What do we always do with the last two? Eat them. Little treat, <laughs> huh? Mm -hmm. So these might fit over there. Is it good? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Elf cookies. Elf cookies. Right. Elf cookies. Mm -hmm. I no, thought they were. Mommy, Daddy, get to eat one. Yay! <laughs> Toss it. Let's see if I can catch it. <laughs> <laughs> and then liquid came in the mail. <laughs> yeah, time. buddy. Oh, super excited. Yes. Hello. Huge. <laughs> Y'all gonna pick out some seeds to grow in your garden? Yeah. Yeah? But uh -huh. our, our garden got in, um, I got in messed up with uh, rain. Yeah, we'll rain. make another one though. Well, it hit winter time, so that's probably lost. <laughs> but we'll have another one. <laughs> All right, so be ready for a video soon with the Stivers Homestead Spring Garden plans. You better believe it. Oh, you Fire cider shot. You get so much used to it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there it is. There was the heat. It's so good, y'all. I can't wait. We got all this immune system stuff and it's just delicious. Oh, you, oh. Fine. Everything's fine. Good. Okay, it has cooled down enough. Um, it's still warm, but it is not scalding hot anymore. You can touch it, basically be able to put your finger in it. So we're just gonna strain it and get all the berries and all that stuff out of there. Mm -hmm. Where's the cookie? Well, it's not cookie time right now. It's elderberry time. But it's not cookie time. Okay, and then once you've gotten all your elderberries out in there, and you can see how they're losing some color, um, they were very, very dark to start. Basically black. Now they're more of a purple. But you just kind of want to squish and get all that remaining juice out. If a little pulp, a little strain comes out, it's fine. Squish, squish. Squish, squish. But you just want to make sure you get it off. All right, so that's good with that. Okay, once you've got everything strained out, she's putting it back in the bowl, which uh, she washed out to make sure that there were no remaining actual berries Nothing in there. Nothing came out, so that's good. good. Um, a few is fine, but you don't want a whole bunch of elderberries right. in there. Nobody wants to die. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now we're going to add our honey, which is the last ingredient. So, honey is optional. Some people don't use honey. You don't have to. It just adds a lot to it. Also, if you wanted to can, you could not put the honey into this, can your elderberry syrup, and then put your honey in when you open up to drink it. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and do it because this is just for us and some family. So we're going to put our honey in. It's raw honey. We actually got it from the farmer's market this past weekend. We didn't take y'all, but we wanted to. It was just weird. Uh, <laughs> but it's lo raw local honey, so it's right down the road from a guy here in Frankfurt. And we're going to put in a, one and a half cups of honey. And uh, we're basically matching the elderberries. So one and a half cups of honey to one and a half cups of elderberries in each pot. Yum yums. Yum yum. Is that right? Everything is so sticky. 
<laughs> yep. All right. All right, so the syrup is cooled down and we're gonna ladle it into our jars. And once you put the honey in, just stir it around until it seems like it's all mixed, uh, mixed together and it'll dissolve right into the elderberry syrup, right? Yep, this is pretty. So we're just putting ours in the fridge. We're not canning. Um, it's not gonna last long once we divvy it up between <laughs> family members. So we're just gonna put it in these little pint jars. Wow. Pint jars. Pint jars. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Kentucky. Yep, and put it right in the fridge. So I'm hoping on the next batch that we do, once we get rid of these, that we'll actually can it and then it'll be a much bigger batch. And then maybe we can sell it to you guys. Yeah. On this round, we're not, um, but keep an eye out, maybe on the next round if you are interested. And we'll see how it goes. So one of our biggest goals for 2020 is to expand outside of our family and start sharing with you all. So many people have asked about Jen's lemon balm tincture, comfrey salve, uh, say the, cat, the C word. What? Calendula. Calendula. <laughs> Calendula salve, um, all of her teas, this elderberry syrup, all the things that she makes to make us healthier and better and just all that good stuff. So many people ask if uh, she's selling. And so we've always just this year done it to be informative and for our own family. But I think next year the, the one of the biggest goals is to start larger batching um, so we can actually start selling this stuff yes. to you all. I agree. So that is exciting. Exciting stuff. So be looking forward to that. Um, I know we are going to be uh, the next round of homesteading events. I think we're going to do more vendoring um, where we, this whole 2019, we just kind of went and visited, got our feet wet, checked things out. So we'll probably be doing a lot of that. And then we'll also do some online sales stuff too. So yep. just keep an eye out for that. All right. So that, no, I was about to, <laughs> Sorry. my bad. Um, that one pot made four pints. So that is awesome. Right. So the recipe that's going to yeah. be below will make four pints. Yep. So and that's, gonna... that's good enough. Cleans four jars. <laughs> oh yeah, because I, I, we were guessing. Yeah. I said six. She actually said four for I both. I said three or four. Yeah, just for the record. Yeah. So that's pretty good. <laughs> Canning I mean, queen that's, over here. That's awesome. Yeah, that's really exciting. So it'll probably make another four. Yeah. So get to cleaning, I guess. <laughs> so there's seven pints, and then it made an eighth that was a little bit smaller, and that's the one we're gonna drink out of. Yep. So it's now it's time to test it out, isn't it? That's right. You first. Yep. So last time, <laughs> wow. last time we did this, it was quite the yeah. the facial expression. I don't think this one's gonna be near as bad because it's good. So we just put a tablespoon in there. That's just the shot glass. It seems like a very little amount. You sure, it's, if, that's it. That's this is preventative. preventative. If you're sick, you can take more than this a few times a day. What about two to three, yeah. three to four? Yeah, if you're right in the thick of it. Yeah, you're maybe. Real, real, real sick. Same, Same as with the fire cider. Right, yeah. three to four every four hours. Power it down, but yeah. for preventative, down the hatch. <laughs> It's so sweet. I mean, okay. you, you taste the honey, everything about it's just really delicious. The ginger, the cloves, all the stuff coming out. She will not be making a facial expression like the fire cider. I hope not. Oh, wow. It's really that good. good. Yeah, it's delicious. It's like, I don't know what it's like, but it's like something. It almost tastes like coffee. Kind of. Sweet coffee. A little bitter. Yeah. That's good. I wish I could get the kids to try it, but honestly, every time they see me in the kitchen now, they're like, no, mom's <laughs> another science experience. They would like it. They would really They like would. It. I'm going to see if I can get up there. Right. I want to do it quick. So All right. Are you going to be awesome and try it out? I'm going to take a little sip. Okay. Take a little sip. See what you think. Mmm. You like it? Kind of. Well, Not can it. you finish it? For all your followers on YouTube. Go, 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 what's taking so long? Down the head, brother. <laughs> you did it. Oh, you dribbled a little, but how was it? Good. I Good? don't want to. You don't want to? Why not? Big brother did it. Mm. You know what, Why? That's going to help you not be sick. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so the verdict is it's delicious, yeah. it builds your immune system, and it keeps you healthy. That's so right. there's no wrong easy. way to go here. Super Very easy. easy. I used to think I couldn't do this kind of stuff. Um, I thought that 
the ingredients were hard to get you know you had to go to like whole food stores and they're expensive and that kind of stuff but the truth of it is it's simple it's easy it does not take confidence anybody can do it and it's just better do it for yourself instead of buying it do it at home right and that's you know everything our channel is all about is showing you that you can do that because we're just two simple old people yep. doing these simple old things <laughs> that seem far out of reach but they're not yep. so uh, that's our biggest key that we want you all to take away from this uh, you can do it elderberries they're not incredibly cheap, but they're cheap, yeah. you know, and you can get them. We got ours off Amazon. They're going to be linked and below. just make you a whole batch in bulk, and then you have yeah. it. There's your elderberry syrup for the year. Right. It took, I mean, totally, it really took about an hour because yeah. 45 minutes was letting the simmer. Um, so it's very simple to do. Um, like I said, we are not selling this batch. Just an FYI, we will uh, make another batch at more of a bulk. Um, and we will start selling some of that stuff out if you are interested, but you can make this to yourselves if you want. That's right. Uh, so we'll link the elderberries below. Um, the only other thing you need is the cloves and ginger and stuff, cinnamon, all that's at your store. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> there it is. Watch out. You got a joke. <laughs> and then get you some local raw honey at your farmer's market or any place like that. Um, even if you go to Kroger or something, you can find local raw mm -hmm. honey. I'm just looking at the little sections that they showcase um, farmers near you and stuff like that. Yeah, here we have Kentucky Proud. I'm sure yeah. every state has some similar little section in Kroger like that. Yeah. Uh, but that's about it. I hope you all also enjoyed the get to know us kind of stuff with us answering some questions. Yeah. Uh, hopefully it was entertaining and informative mm -hmm. and a little bit more insight mm -hmm. than rather boring. So yeah. that's mm -hmm. the fingers crossed at least. But you all are awesome. We love you all very much. And I think this is where we wrap it up. That's right. We love you all. Until the next one. Bye. Bye.